Good morning, everybody. If I just chat amongst yourselves, don't worry about me at the front. You're very welcome to our morning worship service. If you're visiting with us this morning, you are especially welcome. I want to run through a few quick uh, announcements. Uh, everything is up and running as normal. The only thing that's not back until spring is yoga. Uh, 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 the girl who runs yoga is not starting back until spring, but we keep you posted on that whenever it happens. But everything else is up and running this week, including the drop-in for the adults at 11 o'clock, and then also uh, on Tuesdays, that is. And then the Bible study. The Bible study is only every second and fourth. Uh, Thursday at, at the moment, so just keep an eye on on, on the announcement sheet, and uh, that will keep you uh, up to date with what's happening. Now, prayer ministry training. We hope uh, in, in, in the not too distant future uh, to provide. Uh, I know you can be prayed with if you need to be prayed with, but we would like to every Sunday to provide prayer ministry. So to give you a bit of space, if you wish to be prayed for or have somebody prayed for. Uh, that there will be a couple of people either in the transept or down in the little side room off the hall when you're having coffee. Now, there are a number of people, I know you're probably saying, oh, what, why do I have to be trained to do prayer ministry? But, but this is a wonderful resource that the diocese actually ha ha have approved. And uh, to be able to pray for people, uh, it's just important. There's a few little pointers. So if you're interested in being part of that team, Please, please, please speak to me. I know we have a number of people already who are trained and a number of people who want to go along to this. But it's just I need to book tickets. It's in Drum Bay Parish Hall, which is just the next parish over. So uh, it's, it's handy. And it's Saturday the 25th of March. That's Saturday the 25th of March. So please think about it. And then we will uh, have uh, just a few people to go along to that. Now, uh, this week uh, we are talking about casting the net. I do apologise, I use this every year, I get one of these little <laughs> phrases, alright? For those of you who study the picture very closely, sometimes we can misconstrue what's been said to us, but this morning we'll be looking at casting a net. I just had to show this picture again, because Ryan and I survived the clergy conference. We were away all week in Sligo, Ryan is in Dublin, so Ryan's had a very busy week. So Sarah and the boys, thank you for letting us keep your husband away from you and your dad for so long. But Ryan is in Dublin uh, this weekend down at college as well. So I think that is most of the important announcements. I'll just check through. Yeah, that's most of the announcements. We're going to take a moment of silence. Uh, and we're going to pray together. And then we have our first song, short children's address. And then the boys and girls can head out uh, for their morning time together. Let's just be still. And Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonders of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to stand together and worship God by singing in Christ alone. Please stand. Yeah. 
We have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk a newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in ever. Lasting life. Amen. Amen. Now, just bear with me a wee moment. I want to uh, talk to you about fishing. Boys and girls, have any of you ever fished before? Yeah? Did you catch anything? No? Okay, yes. Maybe not. Adults, anybody here ever fished before? Alright. Any success stories? Mm, maybe not. Okay. Alright. Well, fishing is something that. I have tried in the past. The first time we did it, we went sea fishing, and I spent most of my time with my head over the side. I'm sure some of you can, can relate to that. One other time I went fishing, and we went fishing in a particular river, and as we were standing there for about two hours, this guy walked past us and said, you'll never catch anything in there except something else that floats. So it wasn't a very clean river, so it wasn't a good place. But does anybody remember Goofy? Children, who we're talking about, have a little watch of this. Hopefully this should work. This will give you a guide to how you should really fish. How to fish. Ah, the beauty of the sunrise or the high rugged mountains. The joy of sleeping in the great out of doors. The fisherman awakens at the crack of dawn, deeply impressed with his closeness to nature. Ah, oh, to breathe deeply of that pure, rarefied mountain air. Fly fishing. The fly fisherman must know how his tackle and other objects appear to the fish. Therefore, through the eyes of the fish, we view the angler, the tempting fly, and uh, study carefully the reaction of the fish. <laughs> the lure is scientifically designed. When dropped into the water, the resulting optical illusion creates a very real 
Lustig, wie gesagt. boys and girls and I might need some volunteers in a moment but our Bible story this morning is where Jesus in Matthew's gospel is walking by the Sea of Galilee and he sees two guys in a boat and they're casting a net now as you see in that picture they're throwing a net into the sea and what do you think they hope to catch? Fish. Fish. They hope to catch fish. Now does anybody recognize this? Do you know what this is? Right, so what do you think I could catch with this? What do you see how this works? Actually, somebody can demonstrate it. Charlie, come up and show me. Do you know how this works? Right, Charlie, hurry up. I've got all day. Thank you. Sorry, you don't have to ask your dad, but still. Uh, where's, oh, so what do we do with this? Has anybody seen these? These are great. We have a whole pile of them. And where do we have these for? Fishing. But where, where, where do you use these? In a lake. In a lake, okay. But we've used them in the rectory stream, okay? And surprisingly, we have caught stuff in the rectory stream. We've caught little, what have we caught? What did you catch? Uh, fish. Fish, okay, wee baby fish. Do you know what have you caught? Nothing. Oh. Nothing. Okay. Jude. Jude, what did we catch? Shrimps, wee baby shrimp, okay? So you'll hardly, you'll hardly dine out on it, but we bought a pile of these, and these are extendable, which are brilliant. They're good for catching people and different things like that. But we use this for what, boys? Do you remember we can't use these for catching? Use these for wee baby fish, don't we? And butterflies. We're talking about fish this morning, but yeah, okay. Butterflies as well, if you want. <laughs> where, where, where was it? I was just about to finish. But we need things to catch fish with. What else can we use? Um. Don't say dynamite because you can't use that anymore. But we can use fish and rods with so many different ways to catch fish. Now, boys and girls, what do you think I have in here? Fish. Fish. Does anybody want to come up and have a look and see the fish that I have in here? Charlie, go and sit down. You can't because you've already seen what's in here. Does anybody want to see what sort of fish what I caught this morning. Right boys, you want to see what I've caught? Now you need to stand back. I'm only joking, they're not that bad, there's not piranha. Right, who wants to lift this fish out? No? Are the boys, right, can you lift this fish out? Like, put your hand in, watch. What, what, I'm sorry, sorry. Lift that fish out. What is it? Lift it out. It's what? It's not, it's not a fish, but what is it? I have to use these, any excuse I get. They're sweeties, but what sort of sweeties are they? They're jelly babies. And jelly babies are what? Small people, aren't they? You just want to see what they look like. Right, okay, does anybody like jelly babies? I love jelly, I love jelly babies. So, in the story of the gospel, this morning, oh, there's one escape, those fish, no, 
Okay, you got... Is there a kiss one? Want a kiss one? You kiss one. Okay. Hope you haven't been picking your nose. Good. That's good. All right. Who's next? Don't take all day. Would you like to taste one? Does that taste like a fish? No? Right. Have another one. And then what we're going to do is we'll let, the, we'll let you take these to Sunday school. But in this bag, it represents, for me, it represents people. Well, some of them have escaped. But Jesus, boys and girls, this morning in the story, said a strange thing. To the disciples, he said, in the boat, they were fishing, and he said, I will make you fishers of men, and to be politically correct, women, and whatever else you identify as. But I will make you fishers of men. And so, in our little bucket this morning, we've had people, use your imagination a wee bit, but we've had a representation of people, of these people. And so, boys and girls, it's important. How do you think you can fish for people, for God? Anybody? Being nice to them? Telling them about Jesus? Telling them that Jesus, when we have him in our lives, that Jesus can help us with everything that we do. I know I'm going to flip that one before somebody eats it. I don't... I don't. <laughs> it's a joys of ministry. So, boys and girls, it's important that as we think about casting our net, joking on it now, that we actually... Pray for opportunities to share Jesus with others around us. Now we have loads of boys and girls here this morning, but wouldn't it be wonderful to have more boys and girls? Can somebody say yes? Wouldn't it be wonderful to have more adults? Maybe. But that's what God wants us to do this morning. So boys and girls, we're going to pray. And then Sunday school and Genesis, you're going to leave us. And head down to the hall and continue your morning together. Let's pray, everybody. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning, Lord, and your fun. Lord, we thank you for the directions on how we are to fish for you. And so, Lord, we just pray for our boys and girls and for their leaders as they head off this morning to their different groups. And we all say, Amen. Now, who wants to take the jelly babies with them? Adults. If you're very good, we we'll might eat some jelly babies afterwards. Okay? So, any chance? Sunday school, Genesis, Louise, go. Ready? And if the adults are really good, we might find another bag of jelly babies for afterwards. Julia, just to keep you happy. Okay. I want to read our first Bible reading. Um, it's from Isaiah chapter 9. and begins at verse 1. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are going to just in a moment stand and, and sing our offer to song. Uh, and it's a beautiful song. It's how deep the Father's love for us. And, and, and as we do that, just if you're, if you're visiting with us for the first time, uh, it's just simply the offering that passes round. Um, and uh, I want to thank you all for your generosity. As I said last week, it's just been amazing to see how you have blessed us as a church. And in return, we are able to bless others in this community. So we're going to stand together and sing hymn 224. The words will also be on the screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
be in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Our um, Bible readings this morning are a real challenge to us as a church and as Christians. And especially, uh, I would say at the start of this year, the, the, the Bible readings have all been pointing us towards mission, towards reaching out and reaching others for God. And in last week's sermon, we talked about come and see. Come and see who Jesus really is. And if you've noticed something in these Bible readings this morning, you will see, but I thought Andrew went to see Jesus last week. Not literally last week, but over 2,000 years ago. But in the Bible readings, it was last week. And now we see Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, 
And again, he comes into contact with these two brothers, Peter and Andrew were fishing. And then we see later on the other two brothers who were mending their nets uh, with their father. And so sometimes when we read through the Bible, it's important that we look at it in the context in which it was written. Because here in this passage, if, if, if we look behind it, we can see that John the Baptist has been arrested. And they were around the area of Bethany and around the River Jordan. And it says Jesus withdrew to Galilee. And by withdrawing to Galilee, he was simply fulfilling the prophecy in Isaiah that talked about Galilee by the way of the sea, that a great light has come among you. And for us as a church, and most of you will know, and if you've driven past here over Christmas, you will see the light, the lights that are around the tower at the top, and you can see those lights from all around. And it's a tremendous pointer as to what God wants for us as a church. He wants us to be a light shining in this community. He wants us to be a light that people are attracted to. And so as we unpack these readings, there's a challenge. And the challenge is this, where will we cast our net? Okay, not the musical kind as one of the guys is doing on the boat. But where will we actually cast our net? Where will we fish for God? And secondly, the challenge in this is quite simply the words that Jesus says, follow me. And I know what you're thinking. You're sitting there thinking, happy days. He's only got two points. But those points can be very, 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 very long. If you want them to be. So don't be falling asleep because we'll just preach longer. But... As we look at Jesus and the life of Jesus, Matthew chapter 4 begins with the temptation where Jesus prepares himself for the ministry and his task ahead. Where he goes into the wilderness for 40 days, he fasts and he prays. And then he withdraws to Galilee where he begins to preach. It says later on in the passage, that he goes throughout the Galilee area and he's based himself in Capernaum. And I know for those of you who have been to the, to the Holy Land, including me, there's a beautiful synagogue that they actually have uncovered in Capernaum where they reckon Jesus stood and preached. And one of the, one of the honours for me is when we were away on that tour that I was asked to read this particular passage in the actual place where it was set. But for us... And for me, there's a real challenge. How do we fish? Now I'm fascinated. Our, the boys and the girls, when they come to the rugby field, especially in the better weather, they, spend, they could spend all day in that stream, fishing and, and getting wee shrimp and little fish. And, and, and there's an excitement to it. And so if you, I'm going to say, Rosemary would kill me if I said, if you want ready your children over the summer, just send them up to the rugby field. We'll not be looking after them, so you'll have to stay with them. But there's a tremendous excitement, and even us adults are intrigued by it. When we walk past that stream and you see little fish in it, I don't know why we just can't leave them alone. We've got a terrible, terrible urge to actually lift them out with the net and have a look at them in the bucket. But we should have that much excitement for reaching people for God as those young children have for just simply playing in the street. We need that excitement. If we want to see this community to continue to grow, if we want to see our families impacted by the love of Christ, we need to fish. And I don't mean, and I always say it's just preaching at them or, or, or telling them, go and read your Bible or just rhyming off verses. They need to see Christ in our lives. That's what is attractive. When we have the light of God in our lives, that's what attracts others. And probably if you're here in church, if maybe it's somebody else has invited you here, or there's something that has captured you and that you've decided to stay, but it shouldn't stop there. We must, we must reach out to others. We as a church have been really blessed over these past number of years. 
And in, 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 in a few weeks, we hope to be starting to look at, at, at the plans that we had pre-COVID for actually creating a better space site out here, perhaps something at the hall. And God has blessed us. But it doesn't stop there. Because God, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, wants us to bless those around us. We need to be tuned in to what our community want and what our community need. And the first thing that they need is to know that Jesus loves them. That Jesus is for everybody, irrespective of, of background, irrespective of age, but he is simply for everybody. Now Ryan and I spent four days up <coughs> in, in, in Sligo at, at the clergy conference and I know we have joked a wee bit about the Father Ted convention, but it was good to spend time together. It was good to hear others talking about mission and it was good to hear the bishop encouraging us as clergy to go back to our churches and to encourage a real time of mission. Somebody said at one of the conferences, one of the speakers, that, oh, the churches are all in decline. And I felt like putting my hand up and saying, well, actually, no, ours isn't. Willie's church isn't. Other churches around us are actually growing because people are aware of the love that we have for them and the love <coughs> that we have for Christ. Matthew's Gospel says that people living in darkness have seen a great light. Echoing the words from Isaiah, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. In my life, there have been times of darkness. In my life, there have been times of despair. And I know looking around this church that there are others and you have felt that way as well. But be comforted by these words. That Jesus is the light. Those living in the land of the shadow of death. It says a light has dawned. You see for Christians we have this amazing hope. We have this amazing hope in Jesus. And so... As we think of that hope, there's a challenge as to how we share that hope with the people and our families around us. I have to say, if I was out fishing in a boat and some guy walked past, I just said, follow me, leave everything behind, it would be a bit of a complication, wouldn't it? Because you would say, well, actually, let me get my nets in first, let me get my boat tied up, let me go and spend time with my family, and then I'll think about following you. Because with Jesus, there is that urgency. He says, follow me, come with me, and I will make you fishers of men. That term, follow me, is sometimes a very difficult thing to do. I remember years ago when I was when I was 18, and uh, I was very involved in my local church, and the people there all were trying to push me into Bible college, and I resisted because I wanted to be in the place. I wanted to join the place, and I always remember. I would say, "Be careful what you bargain with God for." I always remember saying to God. Lord, if you let me get in the place, maybe sometimes I think of the ministry. Mm. Do you know what? He doesn't forget. So be careful what you bargain him for. But there's a real challenge. I know it's easy for me to say, or say because I'm standing up the front. It's easy for Ryan to say because we are involved in ministry. But can I tell you something? It's not an easy calling. Being a clergyman is not an easy calling. Being a Christian is not an easy calling. But with Jesus, we have the promise of hope and light eternal. 
one of the guys at the conference just simply said, with all these other seminars about, about church planting, about church growth, and one of the things that stuck with me is, he says, if you just simply preach about Jesus, he said, that's how simple it is. Show people who Jesus is. Show them what he's done in your life and others will be attracted to it. Follow me. And if we think about following him, are you prepared to leave your other life behind? Because when we follow Jesus, when we give Jesus complete control of our lives, some things may have to change. I'm not going to say you're all going to have to wear a collar or do anything like that, but some things may change. Perhaps the light of Christ will shine in your life. That that darkness that perhaps holds you back will be overcome. In just a wee moment, we're going to just pray. And as we pray, I want you to actually think about what you're doing for God's kingdom. If you're still stuck in the boat, if you haven't taken that step, firstly, to follow him, to have him in here, and secondly, to do his work and his will. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we thank you for the words that we have sang together. Lord, that in Christ alone our hope is found. Lord, we thank you for the example, Lord, of, of Peter, of, of, of Andrew, Lord, of the other disciples who just simply gave up their lives to follow you and to extend your kingdom on this earth. And Lord, as individuals, Lord, we pray for that strength. Lord, that strength, Lord, to shine a light on lives around us. Lord, we just thank you for uh, the things that you have given to us. And Lord, as we thank you for our lives, Lord, we just pray for a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit this morning. Lord, it's good to be excited about you. Lord, it's good to be excited about your church, Lord, and your church as it grows. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you will help each one of us in this place, and even those who are joining with us online, Lord, to be challenged by the words that you've said this morning, or to follow me. And so, Lord, as we, as we gather as a community, Lord, we want to pray for those in need. Lord, we continue, Lord, just to pray for Ellen. Lord, just as she recovers in hospital, Lord, we just pray, Lord, for, for this care package, Lord, that it will come, Lord, about quickly. And, Lord, that you will just be with Brian at this time. Lord, we pray for we, Patrick. Lord, you know the prayers that have went up for him over these years. And Lord, just, Lord, we pray, Lord, for ease, Lord, in his life, Lord, that, that the pain, Lord, will be controlled. Lord, we pray for healing in his wee body. Lord, we pray for strength for his family. And Lord, in, in this church, Lord, we'll all come here this morning, Lord, and there are things in our lives, Lord, that can challenge us, Lord, that can grind our gears, Lord, that can annoy us. But Lord, just in this place this morning, we take a moment and lay them all before you. Lord, in your mercy. 
And so, Lord, with those words echoing in our ears, Lord, come and follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. Lord, we just pray that that will be all of our prayers this morning. Lord, we think of those in our own families, Lord, who are far from you. And Lord, we lay them before you this morning. And so, Lord, we want to come to you, Lord, and just sum up our prayers in the beautiful words that you have taught us as we say together, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Then is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In just a wee moment, we are going to stand together. And actually, we're going to sing this wonderful hymn, Blessed Assurance. And I, I, I just, you know, there's, there, there's something that I think is stirring in this church and in this community. At the start of this year, as we want to see this place filled, not really necessarily about numbers, numbers are good, but we want to see lives transformed, we want to see people growing in their faith of Christ and having that real experience of a personal God, somebody who cares for you. And, and, and this course, this is a lovely old hymn, but it says, this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. And so may that be something that you want to embrace. Something that you need to embrace. May that be something that our family and our friends will also experience. So we're going to stand together. Bring our service to a close with this wonderful thing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is my
So next Sunday at 11, uh, or 11, half nine, we're back here for, for Holy Communion. But next Sunday at 11, we are in the hall uh, for our breakfast service, the first of the new year. And if you haven't experienced it before, Mike and the crew do wonderful bacon baps, don't you? Well, the women do all the preparation in the background and we just look good, don't we, up front? So please, 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 it's a great service to invite your friends and your family along to as we gather all together at 11 o'clock down in the hall. I bet you never thought you'd hear that fish with a bacon bap. I heard one person saying that they used to fish with wine bottles, but I wouldn't recommend that. Amen. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all this.